John Paul Jones is one of the younger members of the session ranks. He was just 20 in January, but his musical ability is such that his future in British show business is virtually assured. Producer Mickey Most has signed up John as a musical director, and his first two products are Everything I Touch Turns to Tears by Barry St. John. Land of 1000 Dances by the Cherokees. His big task comes up in April when he flies to the States to take charge of the music for the Herman's Hermits film. John has developed tremendously in this direction of his career, and he seems to be spearheading the new breed of musical directors along with Mike Vickers of Manfred Mann. But don't get the idea that John is putting sessions aside, this is a very important part of his day-to-day -day life, and he has no intention of stopping his work as bass player in the recording studio. He can play piano organ and bass, but it's on the latter instrument that he is really in demand by the top stars. And by top stars, we mean people like Shirley Bassey, Kathy Kirby, Lulu, Paul and Barry Ryan, and Dave Berry, all of whom John has backed at one time or another. And they are just a few. John has worked hard to get where he is today, Music was in his blood from the start, as his father was a pianist arranger and bandleader, and his mother was a singer and dancer. He lived in Eltham and he was influenced musically from an early age. He was taught the basics of the piano and decided he was more interested in the organ as a keyboard instrument, but found that to learn this instrument properly, he needed tuition. He came up to London for lessons and by the age of 14 he was playing at the local church. It was around this time that he began to take an interest in the bass. I couldn't even play a six-string acoustic guitar when I started, John said. I was just fascinated by bass work. I used to turn up the bass on my records and listen to the runs. And in time, I just picked it up. I can also play ordinary guitar now by the way. John recalls that he got hold of a Dallas tuxedo bass guitar and a made-up amp of about 10 watts. When he was pretty proficient on this instrument, he joined a few local groups, and gained an entrance into Tin Pan Alley by joining up with a backing group for vocalist Chris Wayne. The group didn't make any hit records, but they were quite well known in London due to appearances on Saturday Club and other programmes on television and radio. And it was through this, that John began to get to know quite a few people inside the business. One day, he saw his chance of a big break and took it with both hands. John said, I saw Jet Harris, who had just left the shadows, walking along Archer Street one day. This was just when Diamonds was hitting the high spots. The song was breaking big in the charts, but it had happened so quickly that Jet Harris and Tony Meehan had made no plans for a backing group. So I saw my chance and took it. I went up to Jet and asked him outright if he wanted a bass player. He fixed me up for an audition and I got a job with him and Tony. John played in Jet and Tony's backing group in concerts all over the country and on their successful follow-up discs. And this was just the start. All his experience has led up to a very attractive offer from Mickey Most, but not even this will take him away from his role of Mr. Baseman in the studio. This was John Paul Jones in early 1966, but John kept doing session work until late 1968, when Led Zeppelin were formed. Here are some of his best moments as a session man. In 1967, the Rolling Stones released their Satanic Majesty's Request. The album was panned by both critics and fans when it was released due to its psychedelic direction. John Paul Jones was hired to write the string arrangement for the song She's a Rainbow, which remains one of the most popular tracks on the album. John's string arrangement perfectly complemented Brian Jones' Mellotron part and that delightful piano by Nicky Hopkins. John had known Stones manager Andrew Oldham since 1964, when Oldham produced his first solo single. The single featured a rather unremarkable cover of a Lee Hazelwood song, but it was during those sessions that he was given his stage name. Andrew Oldham thought John's birth name, John Baldwin, wasn't commercial enough, and he suggested he changed his name to John Paul Jones. And as they say, the rest is history. It was also during those sessions that John Paul Jones first met engineer Glyn Johns. Glyn Johns later worked as an engineer on several Led Zeppelin albums, and he was responsible for John Bonham's massive drum sound on the song When the Leave Breaks. 
both John Paul Jones and Jimmy Page played on Sunshine Superman by Donovan. The song is definitely one of the highlights of their days as session men, and it's one of the earliest examples of psychedelia. It was recorded in December 1965 and was released as a single in America in July 1966. Due to a contractual dispute, its UK release was delayed until December of that year. Sunshine Superman was arranged by pianist John Cameron and Spike Heatley, who played double bass on the song. John Paul Jones played electric bass and Jimmy Page provided the guitar. They both played on many other Donovan songs, and Jones even worked as an arranger on many of those sessions. One of John's last sessions was with PJ Proby in late 1968. The song Jim's Blues has a major historical significance because it was the first time all the members of Led Zeppelin played together in a studio. The track featured Jimmy Page on guitar, John Paul Jones on bass, John Bonham on drums and Robert Plant on harmonica.